Hello, everybody. Happy Thursday. This is another episode of Cuisine Corner Junior, and my name is Miss Delaney, and this is my very special friend. Would you like to introduce yourself? Hi, everybody. I'm Miss Annie. I'm the Youth Services Librarian here at the main branch of the Orlando Public Library. Very exciting. So I'm super excited to be doing today's recipe with Miss Annie. We are doing something that I think is really good to bring in the spring season, those really fresh and wonderful vibes. We're shedding off our winter coat. We are doing lemon shortbread cookies with a jam filling and a vanilla glaze, which sounds like we're doing a lot, but it's actually a very simple recipe. And we're dipping our toes into baking. Usually we're doing some soups or some charcuterie boards, but today we're doing some baking and we're gonna go into the differences between cooking and baking. But I'm really excited. I hope you're also I'm excited. Very excited. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> okay, so we'll go through kind of what we have going on here already. Obviously, you see that I have already pre-portioned everything for us today just to save us some time, but we'll go into that. Before we go into that, we're going to also say hello to our friends on Instagram and our friends on TikTok. I'm not forgetting about you. There's just a big screen in front of me, <laughs> and I'm talking to them primarily. So we're going to go over everything that we have here. We've got some fun games to play, and we're just... We're vibing. We're here to have a good time. So what you're going to need for this recipe is one egg, one stick of butter, which is equivalent to a cup of butter, one cup of sugar, a teaspoon of vanilla extract, a tablespoon of lemon zest, and a teaspoon or half a teaspoon actually of salt. It's just to taste. And then this is two and three fourths cup of flour. And I was hoping that while I get started on this, that Annie, would you be able to kind of tell us about measuring and what that kind of looks like for all of our kiddos who happen to be watching us today? Sure. Yeah, I know we've got some families watching today. And if you've got some kiddos that are going to be helping out with us in the kitchen today while Delaney, Miss Delaney is getting set up. Um, we have pre-portioned all of this out, so it's all in different um, different cups and things, but we actually measured before we got on the live stream here. So what we use for dry ingredients is these cups. They're called measuring cups. And you have a different cup for dry ingredients versus wet ingredients. So these are going to be your, your dry ingredient cups. And um, each of these was portioned out in advance and just put into these little bowls to help us bake. Um, so that can be helpful if you've got a lot of different ingredients to go off of, but this is a good practice for fractions. Uh, if you're at that level with your math skills where you're learning about fractions, we have to portion out, say, a half of a cup, which is going to be that one over two or a quarter of a cup for various things, one over four. Uh, so this is a good chance to kind of practice with your kiddos on their math and their fractions and things like that. So. And if you maybe make a little bit of a mess with the flour, like I did off camera, that's totally okay. It's just part of the fun. But as long as we have our measurements, that's the most important part. What is it that you have to break a few eggs to make an omelet? Yeah. That's the saying. You got to dump out some flour in order to make shortbread cookies. So we're going to start with our butter, our sugar, our vanilla extract, and our lemon zest slash salt mixture that we got going on here because it did kind of form together. I didn't think about that too well, but that's okay. So we're going to do a whole stick of butter. I actually need a little spoon to get this last piece out. And you'll see what I'm using today. This is called a standing mixer. Now you don't need a standing mixer to be able to make this. You can use a hand mixer or if you don't have anything electronic, you can also just use a good old fashioned spatula. If you're gonna be going the more traditional route, I would make sure that your butter is as soft as possible. You can even melt it if you want to, just make sure that it's not hot when you're adding it to these ingredients. But if you're going to be using like a mixer or a standing mixer like I am, I would make sure that you're using a paddle attachment rather than a whisk attachment because all those little pieces of the shortbread are gonna get stuck inside of your whisk and we don't want that to happen. Yes. Question on Instagram from alligator12, soft butter, question mark. Yes, thank you so much for bringing that up. It is soft butter, it is room temperature. I usually put it out about an hour to an hour and a half before I think I'm gonna start baking. Or if you forget, like I do often, <laughs> you can also just go ahead and pop it in the microwave for about 10 minutes, or 10 minutes, 10 seconds, and let it rest there for a little bit before you start going. 
And correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Delaney, I think it uh, that's one of those things that's that's pretty unique to baking specifically is making sure all of your ingredients are like the right temperature when you mix them together. Because versus like cooking or something where you can kind of put ingredients together in a pot with like baking, you there's a lot of chemistry involved. So you've got to make sure your cake doesn't turn into a bread or your bread into a cake, that yes, kind of thing. Yes, exactly. So when working with baking it's a general rule of thumb unless your recipe tells you different room temperature is a pretty good way to go That's so right. that everything's kind of at the same place and we're not almost like cooking something before we're baking you don't want to add heat to something like this unless a recipe specifically says to so i'm going to go ahead i'm going to put together or mix together all the ingredients that i just put in minus the egg we're going to add the egg in just a second It is a KitchenAid mixer. I got this for Christmas from my parents, and I decided that what a more appropriate time to bring it in than today. Her name is Inez. I do name all of my kitchen utensils, so this is Inez. Say hello, everybody. Hi, Inez. <laughs> Thank you, Annie. I, was, I just heard everybody over all of the various platforms saying it, so I'm just... You're speaking for... I'm speaking for everybody for who is saying hello to Inez. <laughs> also said, I feel like baking is harder. I also feel like baking is harder. That I feel like that's a pretty good, a pretty good thing to, or a pretty safe ad adjustment or judgment to <laughs> say, because it is much more sciencey. I feel like cooking comes from the heart, but baking kind of comes from the brain. You really got to be careful with what you're working with. So I don't know if you want to bring anyone close in, but we are making sure that when we are making this part of our batter that we are looking for like a really fluffy consistency. I am stopping about halfway. It is, you kind of still see some individual butter pieces. That's just because I know I have to put my egg in and I don't want to overbeat it at this time. But we are looking for very light, very fluffy. We're kind of thinking bunny tail, uh, something along those lines for something like this. And in goes our egg. No shell, I'm hoping. No shell. Look at me go. <laughs> so that down right there. Alrighty. While I get started on this, again, we're going for that fluffy consistency. It smells amazing here. Thank you. That's the lemon and the vanilla. And the sugar, I guess. It just smells really good. It's very lemony. It, smell, it smells like spring in here. A good rule of thumb, if you're not really sure how much a tablespoon of lemon zest is, it's about the full lemon rind around the whole lemon. If you want it to be less lemony, half a lemon of lemon zest will also work just fine. So what is lemon zest? How is that different from the, the juice of the lemon? So with the lemon zest, that's a great question, Ms. Annie. With the lemon zest, we're actually taking a very specific tool. It looks like a cheese grater, but with a finer, a finer grid, I guess you could say. And it's going to just be taking off the top or the essence of the fruit. Because if we were adding lemon juice into this, now we're adding a different acid to something like this, and that might change our cookie entirely. Mm. Honestly, I really don't want to find out what happens if you do that. <laughs> so that's why we're going with the lemon zest. And it also makes it so that the flavor is not so in your face, but rather just bright and airy and sunshiny rather than super sour. Uh, alligator has a uh, cooking tip. If little ones are helping, crack the egg in a dish to avoid shells and, you know, hit your sweet treats. That's a great Very idea. good tip. I should probably start doing that for myself. <laughs> so we're moving on to the flour. This is a quite a bit of flour, I think, in my own personal opinion. But it is a shortbread. A shortbread is a very specific texture. You've never had it before. It's kind of somewhere, I think, in between like a biscuit and a cookie, mm. like a sugar cookie, but it has a little bit more depth to it. You can use, for anyone wondering, you can use gluten-free flour. I have used it in the past with this recipe. Thankfully, it makes relatively the same texture. It's very, very hard to spot the difference, and that's really good for our gluten-free friends. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to add a little bit at a time while I am mixing this just to make sure that I'm not over doing it and making sure that everything gets nice and mixed so that we don't have any flour bits sticking mm -hmm. in our batter. 
because that's never any fun. So it's not going to be a bunny tail consistency anymore for the dough. <laughs> no, I don't know what it would be at this point. Maybe, I want to say like a frog that's kind of slimy. And it's not slimy at all. Maybe more like, um, oh, see, now you're putting me on the spot. I don't know what the texture is going to be like now. I'll think about that for a second while I gotcha. turn, our, turn our buddy on here. Again, Ines, she's doing all the hard work today. Well, that kind of... Uh... It reminds me of, we were going to do some would you rather questions for springtime that were kind of along the lines of our like festive spring seasonal cookies here. Um, so one of the would you rather questions, and I'd, I'd love to see like what everybody thinks in the chat. Um, would you rather be best friends with the Easter Bunny or a leprechaun? See, I have an opinion on this. I think bunnies are really cute. So. I I think bunnies are cute. I'm not sure if the Easter bunny is cute. I don't know. I've always pictured the Easter bunny to be really big. Mm. Do you think the Easter bunny is small? Or is he like a bigger guy? Because he's got a lot of stuff to do. That's a lot for a tiny bunny. That's very true. But he's got to get a lot done. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm more on the mischievous side. So I think I'm going to go with the leprechaun. Because gotcha. I feel like in school, the leprechaun always came kind of trashed the classroom and it was super fun. <laughs> so I kind of want to hang out with the leprechaun, just kind of let loose and be free. So that's where I'm going. Okay. Where are you going with that, Sammy? Uh -huh. so All right. Easter bunny comes with chocolate and then Easter bunny equals jelly beans. Ooh. I'm I might have singing. made a poor decision. <laughs> I didn't want to seem like I was just supporting the bunny agenda, but like, <laughs> I really like the, the Easter bunny for this one. <laughs> Ooh, shamrock shakes. Yeah, that's, that's true. Really good that's very point, true. Gabrielle. <laughs> Gabrielle says that the leprechaun can buy like 200 shamrock shakes with all of his gold. You know, I've never actually had a shamrock shake. Before. I think it's just mint, isn't it? It is mint, but I have seen recently that places are starting to do mint Oreo, but green. So I appreciate the theming, but I do like mint chip ice cream. Do you like mint chip ice cream? I do. I like mint things in general. I feel like people don't talk about that flavor enough, but I think it's a really nice flavor. Would I feel like mint would go well in these cookies, wouldn't they? Like a lemon mint shortbread, if you like added just a little, maybe some like fresh mint, because mint grows like a weed in anyone's garden. Like mint goes, grows crazy. So if you had some mint, I bet you that would be really that good. That would be really good. Yeah, that does sound good. Maybe for next time. Who yeah. knows? Okay, so I do see here that on this mixer, the batter is kind of sticking to my side piece here. So we're going to get a spoon. We're just going to help it along a little bit, just so that we're not running into this issue. I'm really loving this Would You Rather question. Do you have yeah. another one, Ms. Amy? I do. I've got a few, actually. Um, let's see. Would you rather live in a tree or live in a pond? If you were like a little maybe woodland creature springtime animal i don't know i feel like i i said my answer first so i feel like this time oh, you need to say okay your well I, i'm pond all the way i love swimming especially being from florida like we've got all these beautiful springs um beaches things like that i love being on and in the water so i think pond i I'm aquatic creature i get that also as a florida native i completely understand the love of ocean it's just kind of built into you from a really young age, but I think I'm going to go tree, honestly, because I remember, I don't remember what cartoon it was when I was little, but there was a cartoon where there was a little family of squirrels living in like the little cutout of a tree, and it looked like, like a <laughs> cottage on the inside, Aww. and I just think that's so cute, so I think that's what I would go with. Okay. Tree, less predators. Oh, that's true. Ooh, that's a good point. You could be high up in the tree, it would be like a, a loft apartment in New York. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. That's very true. Answer, answer your question. You know, our uh, TikTok name is OCLS uh, Library, so you can find us there or by our name. Don't ruin the magic. <laughs> 
that's that's really good. So if you're interested in like following all of OCLS's platforms and things, make sure you're following wherever you're on the most for your social media because we've got all kinds of events coming up. There's always programs happening at OCLS at whatever branch is closest to you. There's always stuff going on. So OCLS.info is our website. Um, and be sure to kind of stay close because we've got lots of stuff coming up in the summer as well. Um, so get excited for everything we've got coming up because these would be great snacks for, for whatever your summer adventures are. I was going to say, we have a lot coming up in we summer. Do. It's like our busiest time. So yeah. it's definitely, if you are really interested in making sure that your little ones are up on their reading during the summer, we also have our initiative, A Thousand Books Before Kindergarten, which is super important and a lot of fun. And the Library of Worth, of course, we all have some classic books and some new books that we can give as recommendations because A Thousand Books is a lot. Is a lot. Alrighty. So it looks as though that our dough is where I want it to be. So I'm actually going to turn this to make this a little bit easier on myself to get it off of the paddle. And then we're going to just let it sit for a little bit. We're going to let it marinate in all of its goodness. And then from there, we're going to work on our icing glaze. And Miss Annie, I was wondering if since I took care of the dough, if maybe you were interested in taking care of the glaze. All right, I can do it. Hopefully. Super simple. It's only you have a lot of confidence <laughs> in me. So. It's only three ingredients. I do have faith in you. Let's see here. I'm trying to get this paddle off. There we go. Wonderful. Okay. So I'm just pushing this off of the paddle. This is another reason if you can see the consistency right here. This is kind of why we wanted to avoid using a whisk because even with my paddle attachment, it does get ca caught in all of those nooks and crannies, but it does make it easier to push it off of this paddle attachment. So perfect. Okay, so we're gonna let that rest for a second. I'm gonna actually unplug this so it's not in our way and it doesn't accidentally turn back on on us. <laughs> so for the glaze, it is very, very simple. It is three simple ingredients. We have a teaspoon of vanilla extract. Yeah, can't even see extract. it. There's so little it's of it such in a there. It's a tiny little amount. <laughs> About one to two tablespoons of milk. You can use a plant-based milk if you'd like to, or just regular whole milk like we have here. And this is a cup of confectioner's sugar, or also known as powdered sugar. So it is pretty daunting, but I think you got it. Daunting? <laughs> I was confident. <laughs> it's a lot of powdered sugar. Maybe it's not a lot of powdered sugar. But it I think like it is. flour. I feel like powdered sugar looks a lot like flour. You know, I was really, really scared of making that uh, mistake today when I was pre-prepping all of the ingredients that I was going to swap the two. Mm. I don't think I did. I don't think I did. We're going to find, find out. out. <laughs> We're all going to find out together on this live stream. Okay. <laughs> Whether or not we have flour, we have powdered sugar. So a good right. way to go about doing this is that I would put in your vanilla extract first. I think I can handle that. Yes. I have full faith in you. <laughs> And then I would do about half of your milk. Okay. And then I would just get to stirring. All right. The idea is, is that we don't want too many clumps, but we also don't want to add all the liquid in at one time. Kind of like how what I was doing over here with the flour, is that we weren't adding it all in at one time, just to make sure that it was a really even coat of everything. And this is, seems pretty simple. I just have a plastic spoon here. So whatever... I guess whatever spoon, knife, whatever fork, you know, mm -hmm. utensil you have, you can mix up with that. This is also a great task for one of the little ones to do because we're working on those fine motor skills with our hands and we're making sure that we're getting all of those little bits. And honestly, it's really fun. It's icing. I can't really think of a person <laughs> who doesn't like icing. So I, I think you're one. at a really good point to add the other half. Yeah. Look at that go. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm so excited. I don't know if you can see it's not very small, but it's, it's coming along pretty easy. This is a this is a good match for my skill set when it comes to baking. I think you're thinking too low, <laughs> but I think you're doing a great job. And we're looking for kind of when you pick up the spoon, the consistency that you're looking for is that it's runny, but it's not like you're picking up water. So not this. You're getting there. We're gonna keep That's going. We have we're gonna keep clumps going. Clumps left, and we're mm -hmm. looking to get those clumps out. That's what those clumps look like. Just demonstrate. Ooh, we have a couple of really cool things. So Gabrielle says that a cookie fun fact is that the world's biggest chocolate chip cookie weighed over 40,000 pounds. Still not big enough for me. Uh, <laughs> I say do better, but I think that that is really, really cool. Thank you so much, Gabrielle, for sharing that. And then Eli says 
that they recently learned that you can make powdered sugar by just putting granulated sugar in a blender. I think I had heard of that before, but I'm honestly a little too scared to try that. <laughs> but that is really interesting. And if you're in a pinch and you're already got all your stuff out and your oven's already preheated, that's super helpful because it's problem solving. Another good thing, I'm really glad that I brought up preheating the oven. Your oven would need to be preheated at 350 degrees, but luckily that's a pretty low temperature where if you were at this stage and you were like, oh no, like I just forgot here, <laughs> you could just go ahead and turn it on and you'd be pretty good. But let me see what you got going on over there. Ooh, I'm so proud of you. Look yeah. at you go. That's perfect. So this is good because this is my first time making this recipe. So if for all of you, for if it's your first time, this is definitely something that, that anyone can pick up. Caregivers with your kiddos can definitely check on this recipe. It's, it's pretty straightforward. Yes, and it also smells delicious. It does smell I'm very good. <laughs> Try not to drop this paddle here. I'm going to put it right there for a little bit. But no, it smells wonderful. And you did a great job. Okay. So we're just going to set that off to the side. Okay. I'm going to clear some space for us. While Miss Delaney's getting that set up, I wanted to kind of follow up with their, their summer programs because we talked a little bit about books. Um, but I know I am a, still a reader, even though I'm not doing my thousand books before kindergarten. Um, we have a great platform called Beanstack, and the link for that is ocls.beanstack.org, where you can track all of your reading and win cool badges and things like that. So we've always got Beanstack challenges. We've got something going on for 100 year, our 100 year anniversary right now. Um, so we've got lots of events on Beanstack that can kind of correlate to the programs that we've got going on here at the branches. So I would definitely check that out if you're an avid reader like I am and always looking for like some new challenges and things to do with your reading list. So. That's, uh, that's another cool thing. It's ocls.beanstack.org. Um, so come check us out there. Wonderful. You know what? I think we're going to just keep that right where it is. <laughs> and Nez likes the bowl, so she's going to keep it. I'm going to let her keep it. So we are moving on to actually forming our dough balls, which I am super excited about. You'll see in front of me, I just have a regular cookie sheet and some parchment paper line. If you do not have parchment paper, a wonderful little hack is that if you want to take just a little bit of either some cooking oil or some butter on a paper towel and just put a thin layer all across the cooking sheet, it essentially does the same thing. And that's honestly a trick that I use a lot in cooking and baking because I often run out of parchment paper and don't realize until I'm out of stuff like this. I did not realize that. I've done that so many times and I'm just like, oh, okay, I guess I'm not doing this recipe. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's super simple. Honestly, my, my dad taught me when I was really little and he uses it for whenever he makes his homemade biscuits. Oh, and okay. it also gives it kind of like a crispy, buttery like bottom. So it's not super soggy. It's really nice. So little hack for you. We're just full of hacks and problem solving today. So with our batter, it's going to kind of resemble like a magic sand, Play-Doh-y kind of texture. The idea is, what would you call it? No, we're not, we are still bunny tail adjacent. Bunny tail adjacent. I think we'll okay. go with bunny tail adjacent. <laughs> so we're going to be making the balls. We are wearing gloves for this, but of course you can just do it with your hands at home. It's about going to be the inner size of your palm. Obviously everyone has different sized palms, but we're just using that as a rough measurement. It's about a, a spoon scoop is what you're looking for. So Miss Annie, if you want to just get in nice and real close, okay, we're just going to work on this together. Teamwork. Teamwork makes the dream work. You'll see <laughs> when I squish it with my hand, it kind of forms really simple. So I'll step back a little bit if you want to get your first one. And then it's almost like we're just playing with Play-Doh at this point, but it smells really good. <laughs> Cooking dads are the best. Cooking dads are the best, definitely. That's actually how I learned all of this was just with my dad. Oh, that's great. Yeah, it's my favorite skill that I have. So as I said, it's about the size of my palm, inside of my palm. And then you're just going to take your thumb and press down. And voila. Ooh. That's it. I got my fingernail, the print of my fingernail. That's on okay. It. <laughs> Again, that's why we're wearing gloves. But <laughs> it's about just like that. These are called our thumb print shortbreads. And we're just going to place them on our cooking sheet. They do really, the consistency is very much like Play-Doh. 
And they're about the size of like an avocado pit or avocado seed. Yeah, too. an avocado that's, pit. That's perfect. Oh gosh. Goodness, goodness. There we go. Eli says that <laughs> my dad taught me everything I know. Don't tell my mom. <laughs> <laughs> I have to agree with you on that one, Eli. That's hysterical. Your dad might have learned some of it from your mom, too. You never know. Can you eat the cookie batter, Gabrielle asks. Unfortunately, <laughs> I'm going to say on camera, no, because it has a raw yeah. egg in it. But you do with that what you will. But I'm going to go with no, because we don't want to risk salmonella. <laughs> They taste much better cooked, I'm sure. They taste much better baked. They do, definitely. So while you could, would you want to, to not have as many cookies at the end of it? Ooh, That's the no. question. And then what are we going to do with the icing? Mm -hmm. I can't drink icing as much as I would like to. I don't <laughs> think that that's a good idea. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm missing a lot, Miss Annie? Hmm. Those would you rather questions that you had. Oh, those would you rather that. questions. OK. Let's see. I may or may not have a handy dandy list that's hidden away from the camera so you guys can't see it. We're just exposing <laughs> all of the, all the secrets. Today. <laughs> all right. So, would you rather be a butterfly for a day or be a frog for a day? Ooh, who went first last time? Was it me or was it you? I did. You I went, went first. first. Okay. So, I'm going to go first this time. I am going to go with frog. And I will tell you why, audience. I know you're asking. I'll tell you why. Because I want to be lazy. I want to sit on my lily pad. I want to <laughs> take a little nice dip. Right. I want a snack. I don't have to leave where I am because my tongue can reach it. I'm. It's an ultimate lazy gal's dream. And that is what I am to my core. So I'm going to go with frog. But I am very interested to learn what you think, Miss Annie. I agree. Um, also Ooh. with the pond, I feel like it makes most sense to go with frog. You're staying with your, your yeah. I've got a theme, theme going. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect for spring, you know. Always want to be out on, out on the water. Plus, the frogs are cute. Frogs are very cute. They're really cute. I honestly have come to enjoy them more in my older age because I have definitely had little scares of growing up in Florida where. One had been just randomly inside my house because they just end up places. It's rainy. They just end up in places that are dry. Mm -hmm. And places that are dry happen to be your house yeah. or the inside of it. So that's that kind of scared me a little bit when I was little. But I think that they are adorable. And they just look like happy little guys and cows. <laughs> so what do you guys think? Out on TikTok, on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube? Thoughts, frog or butterfly? We've got two for frogs, so. Yeah. Eli also, or are you counting Eli's answer for frog? Oh, oh Eli, no, Eli. You are, I said frog too, yeah. So, so. we have three. And, but Gabrielle says the butterflies are very beautiful. They so is the butterfly contingent going to gonna come in strong and, and win, win us over here? Have you ever seen a butterfly up close, though, like under a microscope? No, and what I have their face not. looks like? No. It's a little scary. Oh, OK. They kind of, kind of look like aliens, but they're beautiful aliens. So I guess that's okay. <laughs> they have very pretty wings and they can fly. They do. They do. When Did you ever do a butterfly garden? I did. I've been to a few butterfly gardens. Yeah. And then uh, in, I want to say second or third grade, we also did like the little butterfly like net thing yeah. in the classroom and we set them free. That was also super fun. We have a comment about butterflies. Ooh. Butterflies, everyone wants to catch you or take your picture. Oh. Ooh. So you're the celebrity of the insect world. That's true. Ooh. I don't know if I could handle fame. Could you handle fame, Miss Annie? <laughs> Definitely not. It would go straight to my head. <laughs> Definitely not. <laughs> Butterflies are very, very pretty, though. And you get to fly. So You do get to fly. Which I feel like the number one superhero power that people ask for is to fly. Either that or I feel like it's reading minds. Mm. But for me, I think I would choose flying. And yet I'm choosing to be a frog because, like I said, lazy girl at heart. Cozy vibes. Cozy, cozy vibes. It's right up there with my cottage. I don't know how I'm going to get into the cottage in the tree as a frog. I guess I'll jump. There. Jump, yeah. But we'll see. I forgot how much that this recipe actually makes. But we're doing pretty good. We're almost done with this sheet, which means that we're almost ready to start decorating. Yay. Book of Camille said a little bit earlier, I literally was looking at Pinterest for a lemon cookie recipe. Ooh. 
perfect timing. I'm just a mind reader. Um, <laughs> <laughs> they don't tell you that in the in the description on the social media apps, but I am a mind reader. And that's why, no, I'm just kidding. I just love this recipe and I've actually used it quite a few times in my personal baking mm. journeys. Now today we are using a jam that I have not used before for this, which I'm very excited for. Mm -hmm. Ms. Roxy, one of the other lovely ladies in the youth services department, she recommended that we use blackberry jam. Mm, blackberry. So that's what we're working with. Blackberry today. lemon, I like it. Yeah, I think it'll be really good. But we are on our last cookies. Blackberry is an underrated berry. It is. I don't often see a lot of blackberry stuff. They grow pretty well here in Florida, don't they? You know, I don't know. They do. I might have to, you know, you know, use the available services here at the library to look that up just to fact check myself. But I feel like that that's true. All I know about things that grow well in Florida are oranges duh, and surprisingly enough, potatoes. Hmm. My hometown at one point in time was like the one of the largest exports of potatoes in the country. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So Did not know up that. in North Florida, yeah. Gabrielle just hit us with another fun fact, which thank you so much for your participation, Gabrielle. <laughs> I feel like one of our true, true fans. She says that lemon fun fact, lemon trees can produce up to 600 pounds of lemons every year. Wow. That's a lot of lemons. What would That's you do a with lot. lemons? Um, make lemon shortbread cookies. You know, I could walk into that one. <laughs> you did walk right into that one. <laughs> okay. Or lemonade, lots of lemonade. I like I like a lemonade. I like a tart lemonade. So I feel like that, that works. Side. Yeah. I, I that's why I was kind of excited for these cookies. And I think they're not going to be as sweet as a lot of cookies are. So no, because of the lemon balanced. is tart and sour. They are very balanced. You are right. Now, could you make these with any of the citrus fruits? Like, could you do an orange shortbread, a grapefruit shortbread, or is it is there something about the magic of lemons that this works? No, the way it I've is? definitely seen like lime shortbread and orange shortbread. Never grapefruit. I haven't seen that, but we could try that maybe. So we are set to go. We have all of our well-loved cookies here. I'm very proud of us. We kept relatively the same size for all of them, nice. which I think is pretty pretty cool saying that you know you have two people doing this and so. we have two very different sized hands too like that's but we did great i'm very work. excited so we're gonna go ahead we're gonna pop these over here now for the sake of time we are using a little bit of movie magic today oh my goodness look at this they're out of the oven how did that happen 12 to 14 minutes later at 350 heat and they're done it's amazing so i need to get us some more spoons we're using more spoons today than I actually planned for, but I think we have just enough. Good thing we had a box of spoons on hand. Yes. After I dropped half the box earlier. <laughs> All right. Alligator says, have you ever zested a lemon, put it in sugar, and let it sit for a while and use it in tea? Ooh. No, but that sounds delicious. I, I love, love tea. tea. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be super, super good and would pair really well with us. I think I would do Earl Grey. Mm. I feel like Earl Grey is my favorite. I love that bergamotty flavor. Mm. And this is, ooh, first try. Look at that. No off-camera help for opening the jar. I was totally prepared to have someone else come in and open this for us. But we did it. We did it. Look you at that. did it. We did it. <laughs> Teamwork. Okay. So, like I said, we have our blackberry jam here. You could also use apricot, mango peach, raspberry, strawberry, grape, whatever you want to use. But for today, we're using blackberry. I would recommend honestly just doing this with a spoon. It's gonna be the easiest way into the little indents that we made with our thumbs. We're just gonna be filling those with our blackberry jam. So I feel like we're gonna make quick timing of this together. Yeah. Now you do wanna be a little careful when you're storing these because you are using fresh jam. So they're not really gonna solidify unless you're putting it into the freezer. So you want to make sure when you're storing these, you're probably looking at a Tupperware with some parchment paper on the bottom and just laying them flat. If you do have to double them up, I would also recommend putting another layer of parchment paper over those just so that if there is any spillage of the jam in between layers, it's not getting on the bottom of your cookies and potentially making a soggy mess. I would say it's a good pro tip. In the refrigerator, these probably have say about six seven days 
of freshness, and it does make quite a bit of cookies. So this is a great treat that you can share with your friends and family, your neighbors, your librarians, thanking them for all the help, the wonderful things that they do for the community. I can tell you from personal experience, librarians are big fans of shortbread cookies. It's, it's a well-known fact. That makes sense. <laughs> that would make sense thinking about everyone here. And again, we're going with those cozy vibes. Yep. Tea and shortbread. It very much feels like a little English grandma, but I think that's okay. <laughs> I like those vibes. Sweaters. It gets cold in libraries. It does. Definitely here in Florida, the, the contrast of being outside when it's, mm -hmm. you know, 95 degrees Fahrenheit and then going inside and it's very cold. <laughs> All right. Put spoon down and we are to our final stage of the icing. Now this really has no rhyme or reason. You're just going to do whatever feels right. And to me, the way that I do my drizzles is that I let the icing fall and just kind of do a little zigzag pattern. Okay. And it is going to get on the plate. Okay. We are going. To, it is going to be a little bit messy, but that's just part of part of the baking experience. So we start for the money shot. Can we? Oh, of course. course. Yeah. How so silly of me. How silly of me. Now I'm ruining the movie magic. I'll even pull these up a little bit. There we go. Alrighty. So I'll just go ahead and start drizzling on here. I usually recommend that if you want to eat it while this icing is still pretty runny, go ahead by all means. If you want to wait till it kind of solidifies a little bit, say about five five minutes or so is really all you need. We have a would you rather from the audience. Okay. Ooh. Would you rather 12 days of cookies or 12 days of pie? Ooh. My vote is cookies, my, I think. My vote is also cookies because I don't know if I like 12 days worth of pie. I like a lot of different types of cookies. I don't know if I like that many different types of pie. I really only like pumpkin pie. Hmm. Yeah, maybe I gotta try more different types of pie, but. Maybe that would be a good cookie. excuse to do it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> You've got 12, 12 days. days. <laughs> 12 days to try as many different pies and cookies. I like this. You, you said it's gonna get a little bit messy. It, did, it is a little bit messy, but I feel like you can't have like, science without a little bit of messiness and baking oh, is sure. science so for sure we're i wouldn't say we're quite experimenting science wise because miss delaney definitely knows what she's doing um but yeah there's you can't have science without a little bit of a little bit of chaos just a little bit a, a safe amount of Sa chaos. An, an appropriate amount of chaos safe appropriate amount and i really like this blackberry jam because it's a beautiful, beautiful, like almost dark magenta-y color. Mm. Like you can't really tell when it's in glob, but if you have a little bit of it, it's just a beautiful color. And it also kind of brings that tart yet sweet vibe that we got going on mm, with yeah. everything. And then I just feel like the vanilla glaze, I mean, you just can't go wrong with the vanilla mm -hmm. glaze. And I bet you that's one that you could do different flavors in too with the glaze. You put the vanilla in there, depending on what extracts you have on hand and what you might want to mix with the lemon, you could do different flavors. Oh, absolutely. Maybe you want the shortbread to be vanilla, rather like more vanilla extract instead of the lemon rind or the lemon zest. Or if you wanted to do like, what else could you do in here? You Ginger. Do... Ginger with lemon would be really good. Good for the spring allergies. Mm. I, I'll That's tell true. you something. I have never had spring allergies ever in my life, except for in the year 2023. Huh. I don't know why, but they, something in the air, pollen and I, we are just not friends this year, but that's okay. Usually I only get winter allergies, which is that a thing anywhere else besides Florida getting winter allergies? Is that just mm -hmm. us? It stays pretty warm here throughout the year, so we probably have more allergen-producing things. But. That's a good point. <laughs> this is why I brought Miss Annie. She puts everything <laughs> so eloquently, and I do not. <laughs> Look at that! We're done! Cookies! Cookies! Wow! Who would have thunk? <laughs> so here we are. These are our lemon shortbread cookies with a blackberry jam filling with a vanilla glaze. So you want to do minimal work but also make yourself sound super fancy. If you got a tea party with your frogs and your bunnies and your birdies, this is, I think, a perfect springtime tea party 
treat. Definitely. What do you think? Should we try one? Definitely, yeah. I know that we I know I said that we were gonna let the icing set, <laughs> but that's boring. And we're not boring here at the library. No, 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 no. So much going on. Can't afford to be boring. I think our library fairy would be a little upset with us if we didn't try one of these. Cookies. If you haven't come to the main branch, Orlando Public Library, or, or we've got our, our setup going on for springtime, so come check us out. Okay. Are you ready? I'm ready. All right, yeah, I'm going to go for this one. I'm going to go for this one. Okay. Should we cheers? Cheers. Yay. Cheers. Everyone. Ooh. Cheers. Uh, <laughs> Woohoo. Okay. Thanks for cooking and baking with us today. This has been really fun. Mm. Mm -hmm. Delicious. Very lemony. Oh, I love this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and the blackberry. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful. It would go well with any jam you have. So the blackberry is amazing. If you had blueberry, if you had apricot, the lemon is mild enough that you could put pretty much any jam you want in there. Okay, and quick question. Um, what section of the library are the cookbooks in? Oh, my goodness. So the cookbook. So if you're here at Maine, if you're in the children's section, we have all of our cookbooks and stuff on the right side um, as you enter the library. Um, but I believe they would be on the third floor of the main branch. But you could also ask any librarian or any, any member of stamp, staff at the uh, branch nearest you, and they can help you find something. Okay. Well, what do you say, Miss Amy? I think we I think we done did it today. I think we did great. Thank think, you so much for teaching me how to make lemon shortbread cookies. This is amazing. You. Thank you so much for coming and dealing with me and having fun. And thank you to everybody on YouTube and Instagram and TikTok for spending some time with us. I hope you're having a wonderful start to your spring. And for us here in Florida, a very short-lived spring because here comes the heat. But with the heat, also make sure that you're checking out whatever summer events we have going on at your local library. So thank you so much. All the love. I hope everyone has a wonderful day. And thank you so much for hanging out with us. Bye. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to our YouTube channel to be the first to find out when we have new fun and informative videos for you. Orange County Library System is your place to learn, grow, connect.